Hi guys, welcome back. My name is Scott, and today we're going to be painting the Wadroon Warbread from Conquest The Last Argument of Kings. This has been a very fun model, and I've painted it up for my wife's army for the game. So let's go ahead and dive into how I painted this model. To get this model ready for painting, first thing we're going to do is prime it with Chaos Black Spray Primer from Citadel. As the base coat for our skin, we're going to start with Skaven Blight Dinge. This is a rather dark gray color, and we're just going to paint this over all of the flesh of this warbread. Once our base color is dried, we're going to wash the entire model using Nuln Oil, and this is going to serve as kind of a guide to help us know where the darker recesses are and the spots where the shade is going to pool on the model, and this is going to help us highlight the muscles in the next few steps. Our first layer of highlighting will be done using Storm Vermin Fur. And this is a slightly lighter color than we used for the base gray on this skin. And we're just going to highlight all of the most raised surfaces of the muscle and we're going to leave the recesses darker. We'll do our second layer of highlighting using Dawnstone. And this time, we're just going to pick out the center of each of the muscles, where we think the light would catch the most. And at this stage, I like to do horizontal lines on the flatter muscles to create the appearance of different rolls of skin and texturing in the skin. With those highlights done, we're going to use a wash to blend all the different layers of gray together. Now for this I've chosen to use Contrast Space Wolves Gray, and I've watered this down just using some basic water from the tap, and I'm painting this all over the skin. And I'm going to do two or three layers of this until I feel that they're blended enough. Now to give the skin a somewhat dusty appearance, I'm going to go ahead and do a dry brush using Celestia Gray. Now this is a very light dry brush. You don't want to go heavy on this because it will ruin the blending that we did in the past few steps. The main goal here is just to catch the most raised surfaces in any spots where there's a sharp ridge on the skin, such as the veins or the knuckles. Now that our base skin is done, we're going to take Cardboard Crimson, and there are a handful of brands that have been either burned or carved into the skin of the Warbread, and we're just going to paint those with this shade, and it's going to give it a somewhat bruised and discolored appearance. Our next step is to take Corn Red, and we're going to paint this on all of the more armored plate looking pieces of the flesh of this Warbread. Now this includes the shoulders, a couple spikes coming out of the spine, he's also got some sort of armor plate pieces coming off of his forearms and his legs. Now we're going to use Cardboard Crimson. We're going to wash this over anywhere that we painted this red color in the previous step. Now you can go heavy with this or you can go light with this. It really doesn't matter too much. It's going to serve as a guide to help us highlight the muscles in the next few steps, just like we did with the gray. Our first highlight on the red skin is going to be Mephiston Red. And just like before, we're going to paint this on all the ray surfaces of the muscle and we're going to leave the recesses darker. And once that's done, we're going to do a second layer of highlighting using Evil Sun Scarlet. Now, we're focusing on just the most raised surfaces of the muscles, and especially where there are plates of armor rather than muscle, we want to just catch the edges with this color. With those highlights done, we're now going to use Reichland Flesh Shade, and we're going to cover all of the red flesh using this color. Now this is going to be, just like before, a shade that's meant to blend it all together. And like before, we're going to do two, maybe even three coats of this, but do thin coats. Now 
At this point, we're going to work on the weapon of the Warbread. We're going to use Karak Stone, and we're going to paint this all over the weapon. Now, this is meant to be like a stone pillar that he's ripped a chunk off of and is using it as a weapon to bludgeon his enemies. And we're not going to go too crazy with how we paint this. We're just going to leave it very basic and tan. Once the Karak stone is dried, we're going to use Agrax Earthshade, and we're going to wash this very heavily over the entire weapon. Our next step is going to be to dry brush Xandri dust very heavily over the entire weapon. Now we're going to begin working on the leather parts of the Warbread. We're going to use Mornfang Brown as our base color for this. We're going to paint this on his belt and any of his clothing that he has. He's also got a series of ropes and different ligatures around his wrists, and we're just going to paint that all with this color. Next. We're going to pick out some of the cloth bits with squig orange. Now there are a series of different sort of cloth wraps on the model. There's also a couple tassels that we're going to pick out with this color. Now we're going to begin to work on the ornaments that are on the model. And we're going to start with Retributor Armor. He's got a couple different bracelets we're going to paint with this color, as well as some rings that are holding his hair up in the position that it's in. Once that gold is dried, we're going to use Agrax Earthshade, and we're going to wash this over all the leather parts, all the orange parts, and all the gold parts that we've just painted. And you can go nice and heavy with this if you'd like, although I do recommend going a little bit lighter when you do the gold areas. With the shade all done, we're going to take Baneblade Brown, and we're going to dry brush this over the leather parts of the model. Now you can get this on the orange a little bit too, that's okay, but don't go too heavy when you're dry brushing over the orange parts. Now we're going to edge highlight all of the orange parts of the model. We're going to use Jokero Orange as our edge highlight here. And this can be a somewhat thicker edge highlight because this is meant to be a fabric. And so it's okay if you get a little bit sloppy with it. It's just going to make the fabric look a little bit worn. The next thing we're going to do, we're going to take Temple Guard Blue. We're going to paint this on some of the beads that are on the bracelets of this Warbread. And our goal here is to make this look like turquoise beads. While that blue is drying, we're going to take Warpstone Glow and we're going to paint this on all of the jewels that are on the model. Now we're going to take Beal Tan Green. We're going to paint this on all of the blue beads that we've painted. We're also going to paint it on all of the green gemstones. With the ornaments done, it's time to begin working on some of the bones and teeth that are on the model. We're going to use Wraith Bone for this, and at the same time we're also going to go through and put a couple little edge highlights on our blue that we did before. Next, we're going to use Agrax Earthshade, and we're going to wash this over the teeth, bones, and any other white spots we did on the model. This is going to turn them brown and give it a more dirty and aged appearance. While that shade is drying, we're going to take a bit of Cassandora Yellow, and we're just going to wash this in the eyes. Now, I previously put a dot of white in each of the eyes. Combined with this yellow, it's going to give the eyes the appearance of being yellow and having a glowing effect. 
Now we're going to take a bit of lead belcher, and we're going to paint this on the remaining ornaments and rings that are on the bracelets of the model. There's also a metal band that's weaved through his hair, and we're going to paint that at this stage as well. Once the lead belcher is dried, we're going to shade it using Nuln Oil. There are a couple feathers on the headdress of the model, and we're going to paint those with Zareus Purple. Now just be careful not to get this on the area surrounding the feathers. Once that purple is dried, we're going to edge highlight the feathers using Demonette Hide. This is a very subtle highlight, so you may not notice it on the camera right now. Now we're going to go back through and we're going to use Pallid Witch Flesh and we're going to edge highlight the teeth and bones that are on the model. We're just catching the most raised ridge on the teeth and bones at this point. As we're getting close to the end, we're going to use Administratum Gray, and we're going to just paint each of the fingernails and toenails of the model using this gray color. Finally, we're going to use Agrax Earthshade, and we're going to wash this all over the fingernails. And we're letting it pool very heavily at the base of the fingernail. And with that, the war bread is all done. Thank you so much for watching today. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, go ahead and like it, and then subscribe to my channel so you can see future videos that I make. As always, have a great day, and we'll see you in the next one.